everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to turn ribbon into a really cute accessory that you can use for hair clips, clothing, scrapbooking, and many other things. Some of you may remember seeing these little flowers that I bought from Joanne Fabrics in one of my hauls. The other day I made this flower, I just didn't add leaves because I thought it looked better without them. For this project you're definitely going to need some sort of ribbon, here's the back of it and I suggest using a really thin ribbon which 3 millimeter is the size of this. You can also experiment with other thicknesses of ribbon. In addition to the ribbon I also use a needle and thread. If you don't feel like sewing you can glue. If you can tell this one's joined by hot glue. I didn't make this I bought it like I said. Personally I don't like hot glue because I feel like it's just a pain in the butt. For the center, of course, you can use some sort of embellishment. I like to use a button. For all of the comments that I'm going to get about how I say button button wrong, no one enunciates the T where I live. Don't forget to button up your jacket. That's just ridiculous. But getting back to the project, go ahead and choose your ribbon color. I'm going to make a green flower this time. It's easiest to leave your ribbon on the spool. You really don't know how much ribbon you'll need. It depends on how many petals you're going to use and how big you make the petals. So it's easiest just to leave it on here and then cut it when you're finished. If you're using glue, go ahead and plug in your hot glue gun or use like some super glue or E6000, which I hear is really good, or some type of fabric glue. But again, I prefer thread, so I'm choosing a color that matches. Oh, and it happens to match my nails too. That is so cute. Just get a lot of thread off of here. Just unravel it like a cat unravels yarn. Actually, um, I've never seen a cat play with yarn in person. I know, I've seen it on the internet seen it on the YouTube. Push. Okay, that, that should be good. Oh! Oh, and cut it. So then, we get to thread the needle. You're going to put the thread into the eye of the needle. It didn't go through. Alright, let's try this again. Put the thread. <laughs> we can't do it. I don't know what the heck is going on here. This is just too tiny. Oh, I got it. Got it. Alright, and I like to double up my thread. So... I'm going to make the two ends join. Then you're going to tie this to form a knot at the end, like that. And then, and you're going to do this exact same thing a few times so your knot's big enough to not slip through the ribbon when you're sewing. That's a good size knot. Now I have formed the first petal by just folding the ribbon to look like this. In order to secure this first petal, you're going to put the needle through both layers of the ribbon, pull it all the way through like that and you can cut off the excess just don't cut the knot now go ahead and form the next petal now it looks like this and of course secure it by putting a stitch through all of the layers of the ribbon so here's two petals just keep doing that until the flower is complete fourth petal and I'll come back with some more video footage once I'm a little further along. Alrighty, so now I have all of the petals on that I want. Cut off the ribbon, cut it really close to the last stitch, but definitely don't cut the thread or else it will all fall apart. If a little sticking out, that's okay because you're going to cover it up with a button. And I chose this one. I'm going to turn it upside down because it has this pattern on the back. And sew this on. It doesn't matter if you use one that has one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes. Any of those will work. And if you're using glue, you can even experiment and use different rhinestones or you can use sequins. I just stuck the needle through one of the holes of the button and then go ahead and put it back through the other one. And make sure that goes through quite a few layers of the ribbon. Um, it might be a little tough at this point. Be careful not to poke your finger because I did that a couple times. I'm really surprised that I poked my finger because I never do that. If you're sewing it on, you're going to see some of the thread in the front. If you don't like that look, of course you can glue it like this one. This is four stitches that I put through. So then flip it over to the back and you're going to just kind of run your needle through one of the layers of ribbon. Maybe a couple of them and just find a way to form a knot. You can do this however you want, but I just put it back through the ribbon to make it more secure. Go through there, take your needle, and put it through the loop of thread to form a knot. Be sure to make a couple knots so it stays in. Snip off 
all the extra thread and we are done. Voila! Here are the flowers that I made so far. Before I end this video, I'm going to give you a few examples of what you can use these for. I know I already mentioned it, but I'm just going to show you. One thing you can do is add them to clothing. I wouldn't want to put it on this particular shirt because it's patterned enough already, but if you have a solid tank top and you want to spice it up a little, you could add flowers or a flower to the strap. For example, here's a shirt that I have from Express, and you could do a design on the front like this. This is just fabric sewn on, but you could do flowers on the entire front if you wanted. It's up to your personal style. Like I don't think I'd want a shirt covered in these, but then this is a shirt I got from JCPenney, and as you can see, I was showing you to add a flower to one of the straps, and in this one there's a bow, so it's definitely the same concept. You can make rainbow petals if you wanted, folding a petal like that, cutting off the extra, folding your second petal, and stitching that on, the third one, and you can just keep going like that. If you add a jump ring to your flower, which is this metal loop that you see like three of right here, you can find them in the jewelry making slash finding section at any craft store. Anyway, if you add a jump ring to your flower, you can add it to a necklace, add it to any piece of jewelry. You can add it to a cell phone strap or a keychain, and that was my phone. I got these cell phone straps from Etsy. I'll put the link to the specific shop in my down in the down bar. You could also sew a flower onto a ribbon and use it as a headband like that and just like wrap it around the back of your neck and tie it or you could glue it onto a plastic headband you could make it into a hair tie by either getting some elastic and sewing it on this is a build-a-bear bow by the way yeah um, so yeah you could do that or just sew it onto a normal hair scrunchie then here's some examples of hair clips and I suggest sewing it on if you want to make it into a hair clip so you would just sew the flower onto this part of it and wear it in your hair. Oh yeah, that's lovely. In the case of this kind of clip, you'd probably have to glue it on. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a requested video that people asked me to do quite a few times. So I'm hoping at least those people enjoyed this. You guys have a great rest of the day and I will see you soon. Bye!